we are introduced to Yuki Aihara. She is talking with Toku Oka on the phone and they are supposed to meet up. However, it seems that he and Mai are stuck in traffic and cannot make it to their agreed location. Yuki decides to see a movie at a nearby mall. Additionally, Mai goes to a nearby library to do some research while Toku Oka waits in traffic. While researching, Mai begins to hear the noise. Elsewhere, the movie Yuki is watching shuts down with the words the world appearing on the screen. While in traffic, Tokuoka hears a loud boom, and when getting out of his car to see where the sound came from, he sees a large explosion off in the direction he is headed towards. He gets out of his car and attempts to call Yuki. However, he loses all signal on his phone. He gets off the bridge and locates a public phone to try and reach her, but it doesn't seem to work. He will have to make it to Yuki on foot. Yuki and everyone else in the mall are trying to evacuate the building, and an employee is showing everyone which way to the exit. However, a stampede begins as everyone rushes to the exit. Yuki gets knocked down and loses her glasses. As she gets back up, she sees the crowd moving towards the stairs, and the security gates are closing off the area. While looking around, Yuki makes eye contact with a woman who starts to run off in the opposite direction from everyone else. She yells out to tell her she's going the wrong way. When Yuki attempts to go towards the crowd, the woman responds back, telling her that there are too many people and no way out in that direction. When asked why she is so sure of herself, the woman says that she works in the building. Yuki looks back at the crowd and notices that everyone is gone and the gates have closed. She no longer has any other option, so she follows the mysterious woman. Reaching the door in the building, Yuki points out that the automatic doors won't open since the power is out in the building. The woman thinks about breaking it, but Yuki knows that these are reinforced glass, so breaking it should be near impossible. The mystery woman mentions that the windows and doors on the lowest floors should be made out of regular glass. She then breaks the emergency glass to activate the emergency switch and attempts to open the door with the emergency button, but with no luck. Yuki doubts that the direction that they are headed in will be able to work, but the woman brings up that the other direction will be so crammed with other people that if morale starts to go down, they will give in to their fears and anxiety, and it will be chaos, and that is the last place that she would like to be. The woman begins to examine the area to find another way to escape. She and Yuki carry the bench over to a nearby vent. Yuki asks if the woman thinks perhaps the network is responsible for the outage, but the woman brushes off her question. Yuki and the woman crawl through an air vent, and Yuki keeps thinking of the text that she saw on the movie screen, The World. She asks the woman if she knows anything about the net, but she says that she only uses it from time to time, so she isn't an expert and asks why she's asking. Yuki mentions how when the movie turned off, it showed a message on the screen from the game The World. The woman dismisses her concerns again that streaming movies is pretty common, but Yuki says how it's odd that a game screen would appear, and that there is a rumor that it's infected with viruses. She tells her that a friend of hers went into a coma while playing the game, but the woman notices a burning smell. She gets out of the vent that leads them to a kitchen. She quickly turns off the gas stove and mentions how the food court is on the first or the second floor, and with easier to break glass on the first floor, they can escape. However, if they found one stove with gas still on, who knows how many other kitchens might be also left on, which might make their time limited to flee the building. Back to Mai and her research, she comes across an article about the Epitaph of Twilight, with a photo of Harold Hewick, who was briefly shown in Liminality Part 1, standing over Emma Whelan's grave. Mai gets a phone call from someone named Kyo. She introduces herself, but Kyo wants to figure out where Yuki is first before attempting to do any sort of introduction. Kyo asks if Yuki is with her, since she saw the news about the explosion near the location that Yuki was near. Mai informs her that she stayed behind and Tokuoka went to go pick Yuki up, but it seems like she hasn't been able to reach him on his cell phone. Mai hasn't seen the news and is unaware of what danger could be in the area, but Kyo asks Mai to keep trying to reach Tokuoka, and she'll try to reach Yuki's cell phone. Mai looks up the news and reads about the explosion, and also hears from others in the library about the incident. The woman and Yuki find an elevator and pry the door open to see how far down the elevator stop. Once opened, they look down and don't see anything. Throwing the frying pan, they can wait to hear a noise and estimate the distance. The woman tears apart the sleeves on her jacket to wrap around her hands. This way, she won't get her hands burnt while sliding down the elevator tether. She tells Yuki that she needs to decide whether to stay behind and risk death or go with her. With how everything is happening, it's possible that if the system comes back up, it may pump carbon dioxide, it can cause a spark that'll cause a fire, 
or even the heater might pump hot air into the building. If those things happen, they might not leave the building alive. Yuki asks about the other people who tried to escape the building on the escalator. The woman tells her that the only thing that they can do for them right now is to pray. The best they could hope for is for both of them to make it out alive. The woman also tells her that those who are stuck on the escalator are stuck behind an acrylic barrier and that no matter what, it won't crack. Suddenly, the fire alarm starts to sound. Yuki has to make a decision right now, whether to follow the mysterious woman or to find those at the escalator and tell them about the escape route. She decides that she won't let those people suffer and decides to make her way towards the escalator. But as soon as she starts heading towards the door, the device to stop fire spreading inside the building by distributing carbon dioxide activates. The woman grabs Yuki to force her to take the elevator option, but Yuki tells her to go on without her. The woman retaliates and slaps Yuki to knock some sense into her. She wraps Yuki's hands with cloth to protect them, and they make their way down the tether. Mai contacts Kyo and asks if she has been able to make any contact with Yuki, and Kyo asks if she was able to make any contact with Tokuoka. Both were not able to make contact with their friends. Mai wonders if she should try to reach Yuki and Tokuoka, but Kyo tells her that she doesn't want to lose contact with another person. We see both the women and Yuki passed out on top of the elevator. The woman regains consciousness and so does Yuki. The woman attempts to move and realizes that she has sprained her ankle. Yuki helps the woman up and out of the elevator. Looking at the first floor, they see the inside trashed and the truck smashed through the doors. Looking outside, it appears that multiple cars are damaged and flipped over. Yuki wonders what could have caused this much destruction, and the woman mentions that it's possibly the second coming of Pluto's Kiss, that when computers abandon us, all hell breaks loose. Pluto's Kiss was a virus that caused all computers and the internet to crash around the world, which resulted in tons of traffic accidents, disasters, and affected the United States automated retaliation systems almost triggering missile launches. The woman walks away and before leaving, reassures Yuki that she lied earlier about the people on the escalators who were trapped behind an unbreakable acrylic. She just wanted to see a reaction on her face. Yuki asks why she would do something like that, which then the woman asks if her last name is Aihara. Yuki confirms that it is her last name and wonders how she knew. The woman mentions that they had once met at her sister's wedding. She didn't think she would recognize her after the wedding since she didn't have her glasses on during the wedding. Yuki asks if she only helped her escape because she is friends with her sister, but she tells her that she had no intention of helping her escape initially. She saw a bit of her younger self inside Yuki. And then the two part ways. After over six hours, Toku Oka arrives at Yuki's location. He finally meets up with Yuki and asks if she had been waiting there at the location all this time. She tells him that a lot had happened while she waited and points towards the destruction and smoke of the mall where she was trapped in. Yuki asks if any of this has to do with the game The World, and Tokuoka tells her that hopefully it is not, but it could be. She asks Tokuoka that now that she is aware, what she could do to help, and he asks her for her full cooperation, which she agrees to contribute. Suddenly, the lights in the area turn on, and both of their cell phones begin to ring. Tokuoka has Mai on his line, and Yuki has Kyo on hers. Tokuoka asks Mai if she found any new information, which she tells him about the Epitaph of Twilight, which gets Yuki's attention. She is aware of it and tells him that Kyo knows about it and how the background for the prototype of the world was based off of the Epitaph of Twilight. Tokuoka lets Mai know that they have a new lead to follow. Yuki doesn't quite understand and asks Kyo if she understands. She understands and requests to talk to Tokuoka. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you already haven't. If you'd like to see more .hack content, I have made a playlist with all the videos in chronological order. If you'd like me to cover any other stories, please let me know in the comments down below, and I may cover it in a future video. Until next time, have a great rest of your day.